Hello, it's another lazy Sunday afternoon in the living room lab of yours truly. Today we're going to take a look at the Hickok Model 156 Indicating Traceometer. This was meant to be a, a benchtop instrument, I'm guessing in the late 40s through the 50s. I could be wrong, I'm going to do a little bit of research on that. But this was meant to be a, a combination instrument to help you diagnose and repair, uh, I believe, mostly radios. And it's in beautiful condition. I got it about six months ago. It's been sitting in my office uh, just as a, as a decoration, and I decided to take it home a few weeks ago. So we're going to take a look at it, see what condition it's in, in, in the inside and out, and I don't know, maybe uh, maybe put some, put some volts on it and get it working. You can see it's got a, a series of controls and inputs along the bottom that relate to meters along the top. The whole thing is, is really in beautiful physical condition. I'm just going to pan around here and, and show you all these, these meters are in pristine condition. All of the controls operate freely. Switches have satisfying click. Power switch feels good. I'm not going to power this thing up. Uh, we're going to we're going to crack it open first. So let's do that. All right, we got this thing open, and it is pretty much what you'd expect from an instrument of this age. It seems to be in in good condition, albeit a little dirty. Uh, what I did notice, and and you'll have to forgive me because the sun is setting and the light's changing, so. So I'm a little challenged to get a really good shot of this. Um, and I certainly don't want to put it on its face. Actually, you know, yeah, fuck it, let's see. All right, so we put this uh, face down on some bubble wrap, so I'm not too concerned. You can see here the two dials actually have this nice uh, flexible coupling here and go through a, a bit of a gear reduction. Uh, there's something similar happening down there. Got a mixture of metallic can and, 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 and glass envelope tubes. And here's one thing you never really like to see. Oh, it's a battery. Womp womp. It looks like... Oh, gross. There's another one in there. Oh, that sucks. All right. So here, let's ram get it into the light. Uh, so there's a sleeve there that has presumably two or three uh, D cell batteries, which is really a bummer. Uh, that was a, a common trick I've seen to use as a to use the batteries as a voltage reference. Um, Oh, that's gonna suck. Well, anyway, the rest of this is in fairly clean shape. We've got some of these old paper and wax caps that are just shite. Um, there, there's not even there's not even a point in testing them. These should just get replaced. Uh, there's uh, presumably a bunch of RF uh, happenings underneath this can here, underneath this shield. There are. Some more, some more paper caps that are just probably going to be crap. These, uh, these early mica caps, these usually just kind of never fail, so I, I don't, I don't bother checking them uh, unless there's a problem. And the rest of this is, uh, yeah, it's pretty much what you'd expect to see in an instrument of this era. So let's see, did we have, did we have caps on the top here? Yeah, we've got, we've got this guy and. Jeez, that's it. So this power supply is this power supply is pretty straightforward. Um, first thing we're gonna do is desolder those connections to that capacitor and see if we can check it and possibly reform it. If not, we'll have to restuff it. Um, yeah, these are just gonna be bad. I, I, I can guarantee you these caps are just crap. Um, 
that's really all I have to show for now. I think it's really up to me to decide whether or not I want to go and and start a restoration or just kind of keep this thing as a beautiful object, which, which it certainly is. So uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.